Welcome back, Shades of Eno friends. I'd like to toast to you today, coming from the porch. One of my favorite places. It feels like summer has been exceptionally long, exceptionally hot. And personally, I am ready for the seasons to change. We aren't quite there, but we are close. So I was really feeling like bringing you a wine that made me smile, put a spring in my step, sort of like getting that second win. So this wine, Paco and Lola Albanino from Rias Basha, Spain, came right to mind. I am really excited to bring you this members only special discount as it is a must drink under 20. But first, a little tease, <laughs> I have a wine tip to share before our featured item, storing wine. So over the past many months, it has come up in almost every tasting I've done. Proper storage to wine is a necessity to ensuring it does not incur any unwanted change or damage prior to drinking. I won't get into specifying exact temperatures because there's so many personal variables and environments, but I will say a good go-to standard is at or below 60 degrees is best. Um, a fridge is okay. Generally, there are 32 to 48 degrees. So if you have a cooler, a beverage fridge, a refrigerator, um, a basement is great. Any cool, dark place is ideal. Um, if you are stirring it in a kitchen, remember that a slight degree change can negatively affect your wine. So it's best to minimize those variables. And no, freezing wine is not a good idea because it will cause the bottle to crack as it expands. Um, it's not recommended for uh, the wine or the wine experience. So again, I cannot stress that enough. Store your vino in a cool, dark place. Something with little heat, light, and movement fluctuations. Um, fridges work fine for white, rosé, sparkling, and yes, most reds. But on a side note, um, I really only put wine in the refrigerator that I've already opened, or if I'm about to grab bottles that I need to use for like a party or a gathering, I might stash them in the fridge, but I don't per se store them there. Um, some of us have space challenges. So if you don't have a cellar or a wine fridge or a specialty cooler, remember this, go low. Heat rises. So temps will fluctuate more in your home or condo at higher heights. Go for the bottom of the closet, um, an old shoe rack off in the corner, no sunlight, an unused dresser drawer under the stairs, under the bed, in the basement. I've seen some really creative wine storage um, options. So don't be afraid to get creative. As long as you stick with darker, cooler, the less bothered, the better. Um, I will say the surefire way to change and or possibly damage your wine, making it really unpleasant to drink is to keep it improperly stored. Um, there are a few storage don'ts that I'd like to hit on. Wine frowns on being stored on top of your cabinets, particularly in the kitchen, on top of the fridge, um, next to the stove or microwave in a cabinet or on the counter, under the sink, um, next to the dishwasher in a, ca in a cabinet, um, in any kind of like laundry room where you have a dryer or any near any other appliance which will circulate warmer air or vents warm air, that's not a good idea. It's best to be able to, when you always check your wine, it should remain cool to touch. It shouldn't have temperature fluctuations. So if that is the case, that's great. Just pop it out, open it up and serve away. You don't need to wait till it hits room temperature. Um, wine warms up very quickly in the glass and um, a little less quickly in the bottle, but serve away. Also, when you're storing, store your wine at an angle, never store upright. The cork will dry out and it'll let air in and turn your wine into something you really wouldn't want to drink. So at an angle on its side or at a slight angle downward, um, but as long as the entire cork on the bottom stays wet, that will make sure um, the seal in uh, the neck of the bottle stays good. And if you do store it up side down, I would consider storing it differently because wine does pick up sediment as it ages and some wine already has sediment. So just by storing it upside down, that sediment's going to mix in with the wine when you turn it back upright. And it's not so fun to drink in the glass. Uh, us in the professional industry 
generally will um, filter and decant a wine. It's one of the many reasons we, we do that with certain wines. So if you can avoid it, I highly recommend it. Now for the vino. So the concierge found this wonderful wine made by a grape of the same name, Alborino. Um, it brings a smile to my face. It's stone fruit, juicy, lush, lively. Uh, I have to say that Paco and Lola, um, Alborino Dio Rios Bacios, which is the region, it is, they do a great job. Uh, it's kind of a unique uh, venture, boutique production. Um, but this grape is mostly known from the Rios Bacios region in Spain. It is grown in other areas, mostly France, southern continents, um, actually some areas in New England, Virginia, and Mar Maryland. It's doing particularly well, but its true home uh, is Spain in Rios Bacios. Now, by trend, this producer is actually known as the polka dot wine, obviously, because of their labels. And you can get it from today and through next Wednesday, stash it in your cellar. It is a phenomenal 25% off only for you club members. This will not be on sale again for a while. So get your perk now while the stocks last. It's 100% Alvarino. It's well suited for veggie dishes, pasta dishes, white sauces, seafood, um, my personal favorite sushi, um, rice, hearty salad plates, white meats. It has a delicious mouthfeel and finish. And I can't talk and not sip. It is classic, classically distinctive in character with apricot, lychee, some tropical fruit nuances, and it has a garden of orange blossom and uh, sweet white floral, a splash of grapefruit and lime kind of dancing around. So from nose to taste and finish, it's bright acidity, it's full of flavor, it's palatable, and it's pleasant for many different wine drinker styles. So let's talk Paco and Loco. Lola. It's not loco, it's Lola. That is a mouthful when you've actually enjoyed the mouthful. So this is a unique venture. It started in 2005 and it was um, a combination of wine growers in the Rio Spacious region. They wanted to bring a fresh approach to the grape the area, winemaking. Per their words, this wine is a cosmopolitan wine. It's an exceptional wine intended with a bold, crisp signature style, also hence their cosmopolitan label. And <clears throat> with this merger of growers from their wine growing, grape growing to their branding and then into the winemaking processes, they practice this ideal of just fresh wine, fresh approach. Albertino particularly thrives in um, climate and soil combinations, uh, of a certain terroir and Spain has that in this particular area, but it's no different from any other wine or grape in that it's going to express itself based on its environment. Now we have a question that I have just pulled up. Um, it is from Tara in Richmond, Virginia. So she's asking about Alborino, and if this wine would be okay for a group that doesn't drink much Chardonnay, but has varied white wine preferences. So first of all, thank you, Tara, for your question. Um, that is a, a, a great question. And actually, it brings me right back to the week's spotlight, which is Paco and Lola Alborino. It is a beautiful option. It's going to discern, it's going to appease a discerning palate. Um, it is great for the everyday Sauvignon Blanc or Pinot Grigio drinker, and even people who drink Riesling, although it's not sweet, it's very fruit forward and it's both crisp and fruit forward. So while this is different, it's a great transitional wine. It's approachable for many. Every time I open a bottle for a friend or a tasting People flock to this wine of all different drinking styles. 
It's preferred with food. It's preferred to sip on alone. I've never had anyone say that they wouldn't enjoy drinking it. Now, a perk to that would be that it's really easy on the wallet. It's award-winning and it's on sale here under $20 on the Wine Concierge site for our members, a steal of a deal. I would pass it up. Remember your links are in the script below and please feel free to send me comments, questions. I love questions. So cheers to you, our members, with a little smile in the glass of Paco and Lola Alvarino right here, 25% off now through Wednesday. I'm looking forward to hearing from you all. We thank you and be well. Cheers. Cheers.